vehicle enough to watch though. And we're off. So we're doing a race between Toucan Sham and Quatropus. They are both excellent speedrunners. Quattro has actually been dropping his time down to where he's got a 106 now. And I feel like he could be a very good contender in this Super Series. We'll be doing the typical stuff here. Climbing up the hill and making our way back down. We're going to see both runners walk in a Trace's room, grab the cracked bat and equip it. You're going to see that most of their movement is going to be pretty similar. It's surprising the subtle differences, like just bumping one time into something can really set you back. You'll notice that some runners will choose to glide off of things and some of them will choose to kind of walk around. It's usually faster to walk a cardinal movement and gliding off of things will help line you up to kind of where you need to be. So it can be beneficial to glide on certain objects and certain terrain. It's going to be pretty similar up till about five minutes. Well, about four, four and a half. Alright, so let me start in here in a second. We're gonna really see how experienced these runners are based on how they handle the RNG outside. Now you could walk right out the door and there could be a spawn plate just waiting and ready for you. So you do want to kind of take a second and just kind of analyze before you start moving out the door. Because if there's a snake right there and you don't catch it in time, it will catch you. Alright, so Toucan's getting a pretty good walk through here. Quattro unfortunately getting a dog right in the way. Toucan is choosing to stutter this snake. Uh, I don't know how I feel about that because you don't really know what's after it. And you may need to make your way around. Ooh, and taking a crow fight here. Quattro also taking a crow fight with a red swirl. It can be pretty dangerous. You don't want to take a red swirl with a, with a crow. 
they do have high speed, so you do have a good chance of missing them. And they will kill you if they uh if they get too many turns in. So two can making it through the fight and eating the cookie. Quattro making it through. Lucky no deaths so far. That's really bad when you die this early on. The Toucan getting a mostly free walk, having to despawn some stuff here. Quattro doing a little movement here to despawn anything that was over there. And both runners hitting the top about the same time. So far, this is pretty good. We're doing some more story trickers here. Now you'll see both of these runners just kind of walked right into this light. What you can do is you can move just far enough right and then make an up movement and then go right and that will place Pokey just a little bit closer to the meteor. It's not much but it is about, I think it's about a half a second time save. So they will need to go get the bread roll. You can skip it. It's not recommended. Uh, I believe Quattro has pretty low HP right now. So we'll see what he decides to do. Six. Oof. So he's at 20. With a level up, he'll probably go up to a about 35 I think I guess that's okay he can get the fruit juice and if he chooses to that'll put him at a safe HP the two cans start in the battle here it's a somewhat kind of scripted battle you're basically gonna go to auto fight and it's very RNG what happens but buzz buzz is always gonna put up a shield attack put up a shield attack and just kind of alternate like that what Starman does is very RNG. He could do just fire beta, fire alpha, freeze alpha, or he can be on guard. You don't want fire because it's very slow. So preferably you'd want him to do an on guard attack whenever Buzz Buzz is doing his uh, shield. And then freeze or... Okay, well that is a really good Starman time here. Or Starman fight. But you want him to do freeze or just be on guard. Toucan is done. This can really show just how much RNG variance there is in this fight. You may get a two round, you may get up to five rounds. Alright, Quattro done. Not too bad. They're about 20 seconds apart. So we'll be talking to Pokey's mom and dad here. He goes up and um, takes care of his children, teaches them that they were doing something wrong, you know, in a non-violent manner. And then Lardna just smacks this bug for no reason, just, eh, get out of my house, bug. Buzz Buzz is just like, oh no, I'm dying, but you need to go do this. You're our savior. Go beat the Sanctuary Guardian. So that's what we're gonna do. Only problem is, we can't go there until we beat Frank. So, we're gonna go fight. I wanna say maybe the most dangerous boss, but Titanic Ant might take the cake on that one.
Frank is definitely most volatile. Like if he wants you dead, you dead. Uh, it's it's just plain and simple. So Toucan's gonna be going up here to the clubhouse. He's gonna be getting a Mr. Baseball cap. You can choose to not equip it. It's faster to equip it. Watch will be making his way through the zoo as well. See if he gets a clean walk. Alright, both of them got a fairly clean walk. So we grab a trash burger. I mean, who doesn't love a good trash burger, right? If you're walking in here, he's gonna pull out 40 from the ATM. He's gonna buy the T-ball bat, baseball cap, and a cheap bracelet. Now, even though Quattro is behind here, there is a bunch of RNG sequences coming up. So this is anybody's race so far. Alright, Toucan deciding he's just gonna go straight with the Manip route. He got a lucky clean walk. That will save him a little bit of time. It's not preferred to do that. Even though they're only like 10% spawn plates, there is that risk that one of them's gonna get you. So with the first Pogo Punk, you don't want to go below about 24 HP with him. If you do, you definitely want to heal. Because... He can charge forward and he will put you low enough to where you won't be able to heal. Alright, grabbing the fruit juice, I can respect that. That'll put him a decent enough HP, he should be able to get through the next couple. Watch her taking on first Pogo Punk. And handled it with ease. Ooh, some bad rolls there. You definitely don't want to have to life up. In the bread roll, if he's starting the next fight too. Ideally, you don't want to smash them. If you don't get a smash, you know, they have the chance to lower your HP and you may have to use a life up, and you don't want to do that if you don't have to. Yes Man Jr. is pretty easy. Fire Beta Worse than Fire Alpha? No, it is not. I believe they're the same. There may be a very small variance in like the animation, but it's about the same amount of time loss. Yes, man, Junior, you can just auto fight. So you do want full health going into Frank. Frank can do a high roll, a low roll, or he can just lower your guts. What you want him to do is just consistently lower your guts. Anytime you take damage, you want to heal. And a smash. That'll be a two turn Frank. Excellent. Quattro starting Frank. So anytime you take damage on Frank, you do want to heal. Frankie Stein is scripted. He's always going to do a burst of steam and then he'll do a low roll. And then it'll be a burst of steam or a low or high roll every turn after that. The so Toucan realized in 21 HP is not an easy mash. So he was choosing to heal on that turn, which was smart. If you're 24 and higher, somewhere around that range, you could heal on a bash turn. But you, preferably you want to be around 30. Like Quattro making it through Frank. We start Frankie Stein. Ooh, Toucan using the burgers here. You don't want to use burgers if you don't have to, but unfortunately he didn't have much psychic points left. Frankie Stein has 90 HP. So you just want to kind of keep track of how much you've done and just keep knocking them down. Quattro at this point could do an auto fight if he chose to, or he's just going to play it safe and bash it out. Alright, Frankie Stein down. Both runners. So you're going to walk back into the arcade and walk back out. That way Frank will give you a full heal. You can skip this if you have, I want to say, full HP and like 5 psychic points, or half HP and like 40 or more HP and 10 psychic points. For a race, really risky to do that, but it's really up to, you know, however the runner feels comfortable doing it. I would definitely just take the time loss and take the heal. 
Toucan heading up to the town hall to get the key from the uh, the mayor here. Quattro following my suit. So they will be heading to the drugstore to buy some, or to pull up money, and then heading to the burger shop to buy burgers. The rule of thumb is, you will buy five burgers plus however many you use on Frank or Frankie Stein. So I think Toucan might have used one, he'll need to buy six burgers. Knowing like that mental math in your head can save you a little bit of time. So you want to pull out 140. Some runners will only pull out 100. You want to pull out more for a race, simply because in the case that you have to come back down and buy burgers, you want to have that little bit of extra cash to buy them. Otherwise, if you don't have enough, you may have to go back to the ATM and pull more money out. And it's a little bit of a time loss. Oopsie, Quattro is going to choose to pull out 140. Alright, Toucan heading up to Giant Step. This is going to be, I want to say, the biggest RNG point in the run. This could be the moment where you save a bunch of time or where you fall way behind. There is a method to the madness, but it is still really RNG based. There is a way you can just kind of respawn a plate quickly. Some people choose to just walk back and forth. There's no real right or wrong way to do this. It's Really, however, runner feels comfortable doing it. So the idea is you're trying to get 22 slugs to get to level 8. You need level 8 in order to get rockin' and ouch, 26, that is a low roll. The slugs have 30 HP. You always want to bash out the first 4 pack because there is a very high chance your offense is going to be too low. To do, you know, 30 plus damage on every hit. Usually you'll get enough offense on the next level up, which is two slugs. Got your getting his first four pack. This is a tough part of the run for new runners, because if you're not good at stutter stepping, you can lose a bit of time here. I would not have gotten that butterfly. It's about five or six seconds to grab a butterfly. Quattro over here, he's using a, uh, a little, I don't know if it's a bug, but just kind of like a way the code works. Because of the four pack above, they're all trying to get to Ness, but they can't actually reach him. So then the four pack below won't actually try to aggro towards him, allowing him to just take him as a single battle. By doing this, he has four opportunities at a 1 out of 128 bomb drop versus just one. As the bomb drop roll is only um, one time per battle at the start of the battle, it kind of just determines whether or not you're going to get it. I think this is uh, 10 for Quattro, or uh, who can now? Quattro is still working on his next 4 pack, this should put him at 8. Ideally you could just auto fight him now. The two cans choosing to walk between the middle area. There's about four spawn plates here. You're, you're avoiding one because you're walking on it. It gives you a fairly good chance. Okay, so this should put Quattro at 12, I believe. So they should be about even here. So far, this has been fairly competitive. So, at 2, you'll get level 6, at 10 slugs, you'll get level 7, and then at 22, you'll get level 8. Now, these runners could choose to, you know, get so many on the bottom and then make their way to the top to get the rest. 
Or they could just choose to stay on the bottom and grab him. Quattro, I believe, is at 16 now. Uh, Toucan should be close, if not right around that area. He's not getting very good luck with the four packs. Ideally, you would want to get one two pack and then the rest four packs along the bottom floor. You don't really want to take 24 if you don't have to. Or you could do, you know, 16 on the bottom and then hope for a six pack on top. Quattro's making his way to the top. I'm guessing he's going to go for a six pack. He may choose to take this four pack here. Yep. So what he could do now is he could choose to go up top and try to get a six pack anyway. Or he could just try and get another four pack in the middle floor. Or if he really wanted to, he could just kind of take a couple Antoids as a single battle. Which is a little bit risky, but he really only needs two more. Toucan having some really bad luck here. Ooh, and another four pack for Quattro. This will put him at uh, level eight. This might put Toucan at 22. I'm not sure how many he's had. He's been having a bunch of small ones, so it's hard to keep track. Quattro, oof, only a three offense. So there is a very, very small chance Quattro could have 24. Most likely he only has 23 offense. So he does need to be mindful of that. All right, it looks like Toucan's just go ahead and take a mouse fight to get himself to 22. Mice have very high guts, so they do have a very high chance of smashing on you. As long as your HP's high enough, they're generally pretty safe to fight. Quattro is going to have to stutter. He's choosing and... Okay, well. I mean, he took the long way around, but I figured he was going to grab that burger. I like to grab the burger because you never know about Ant. Ant could just burn through all of your food. It's nice to have that one extra. Oof. Okay, well. So he did get lucky that nothing else joined there. Okay, that that's a dangerous fight here. Antoids do have 34 HP, so you do need to do at least that much. They can life up and they can call for help. Did... I'm guessing he didn't get level 8 yet. Oof, oof, oof that is very close. Quattro is starting Titanic Ant. Now you want to take your first turn to do a rocket. Get it right out of the way because he can magnet away your psychic points. If he took damage, he's going to want to heal with a burger instead of a life up. Titanic Ant has 235 HP, so you want your rock and rolls to be as high as possible. He can put up a shield, and that will reduce the amount of damage you do by half. So it could take the take a little bit longer to beat him. So far he hasn't, which is good. And there's the shield, unfortunately. Ouch! Smash on Quattro. Or um, Toucan. This is not looking good for him. Oof, he's getting lucky here. He could probably run from him at this point. Choosing to bash it out. Ouch! And a smash on Quattro there. Luckily he had a burger queued up there. So he's taking some serious damage at this point. He took a big gamble there. And another shield. Ouch. And another smash. Ouch. Okay, this is um Oh <laughs> in the gut save. Wow, Quattro is just barely hanging in there. This is a ruthless ant. Oh, one hit away. Okay, Titanic ant down. Who can finally made it out of the battle? Gained 222 experience. Shout out to Skate Man. So he's gonna have to grab two butterflies here. I need to grab one, life up, walk all the way to the right and then back left and he'll have to grab another one. 
Quattro will unfortunately lose a little bit of time. He's gonna have to pull out some money to pull out or to buy some more burgers. Yeah, this race has been very close. Duquesne okay, getting a little unfortunate luck there. He may have a better ant fight, which could help him catch up a little bit. He's checking his offense. He did get 24. He's going to play it safe and grab the burger. I can respect that. Butcher's going to grab this burger. He does need to grab probably another four burgers. At this point, I don't think you have enough for four. I think he has enough for three. So he may have to stop and withdraw like 20 bucks. Alright, Toucan making his way up. Same drill here, he's gonna do a rockin'. If he takes damage, he'll heal with a burger and then use another rockin'. So we're hoping for a high roll here. Oof, high roll damage there. 86 is a good roll. He's gonna need to heal. Alright, he will need to heal again. Oof, I don't know why he chose to life up there. Luckily, he got the outspeed with that, so that's what, 170? Ooh, and a smash. Fortunately, he had enough time to heal it. About 145, 160, 70. Ouch, and that's gonna be a death for Toucan. He played a little risky there. Unfortunately, it did not pan out. Now a death to Titanic Ant is about 5 or 6 minute time loss. He is choosing to take the full heal with Mom, which means if he were to get into you know, a battle he can't really handle, he's going to just go ahead and rock it and get through it and grab a butterfly. Fuzzy Pickles! As Quattro start the cop fight, you want to heal below 60 HP. If you go below 40, you generally want to do a life up because burgers do have a varying range of how much they can heal and you could get stuck in a life up loop. Now this is a very, very dangerous HP to be at. Got a burger drop, but no. Okay, well he's going to hope for a low roll. If he gets a crushing chop, there is a good chance he's going to die in this fight. He's going to go for a life up. And did not get the outspeed, and unfortunately didn't get the mash. So that's going to be a death for Quattro at Cop 1, or Cop 2. Very unfortunate, it's not the most time loss. This will give Quattro, or uh, Toucan, a little bit of time to catch up here. Toucan stuttering like a champ here. Making his way to the top. Oof. Okay, well he's gonna choose to... This is a dangerous situation. You can get pincered. Which is why you really don't want to have any enemies below you when you go up the ladder. Or the rope. Pacho getting fuzzy pickles. He could have chosen to skip getting the full heal with mom. And then instead gotten a full heal with Frank. Uh, I believe he did use one burger, but he did get one burger drop, so he should be okay on burgers. Ouch, Quattro. Uh, that, that's not a good fight. He's choosing to just go ahead and rock into it. Playing it smart. Not the most ideal path, but he is going around the right side, which is smart. Save a little bit of time.
This just goes to show even the best runners can have a bad situation. Alright, so Toucan's gonna be starting the ant fight soon. Quattro starting cop one. <clears throat> you wanna hope for a smash on the cops. At least one smash and at least one burger drop. If you can manage that, you should be good enough to get through. The cops can do just continuous crushing chops and burn through your food, so you do have to be careful. It is worth noting that you can use four life ups and then just use one rocket on strong. That is an option for in the case you run out of food. Mm. At 63, not a very good roll. Maybe the next one will be better. So he's only at about 130. Oof, 104. Titanic Ann is one hit away from dying. He's actually about 7 or so HP. And Titanic Ant down. Not very often you see that. <laughs> Toucan did take enough battles, so I think he got level 9. Quattro slowly making his way through. Ooh, he is choosing to play a little risky there. I'm guessing he's out of food, so he does have to play a little bit risky. Ouch, and the smash. That's not very good. Ideally, on cop 4, you want to have right around, I want to say, 75 HP when you finish him off. Now, Quattro could play risky here, and he could just double rocket and hope for the best. Or he can choose to life up turn 1. He'll get one rocket, and he'll have one life up. Strong does have 140 HP. So he is choosing to play safe, okay. So he's gonna get one rockin', he'll have one life up left. And he is gonna have to just auto fight, ouch, well 66 is a very low roll. So at this point he's just gonna have to auto fight it out and hope for the best. Well this is some pretty decent RNG. And strong down. Quattro getting out of Onet with uh, 33 minutes or so. A good time would be around 28.30, but anything under sub 30 is an excellent Onet time. Fortunately, both runners took a death, so they are going to have a little bit worse Onet. Yeah, four free attacks. He got very lucky in that fight. Like that was an excellent just last resort. He will need to grab this burger on the way though. If he doesn't, he won't have anything to give to Apple Kid. Alright, two cans starting the cop gauntlet. Butcher will need to watch out for mushrooms. They do have a small aggro radius, but if you do take a fight with one of them, it is very dangerous. They could kill you or they can mastermize you and you don't want that because if that happens, I believe it's like once a minute, it'll rotate your controls 90 degrees. So, Yukan will need to do a life up here. He is low enough. Now, had he used a burger and it only healed about 40, he would have had to burn a second burger. And this is why anytime you're under 40, you do want to do a life up. Alright, so 54, he's uh, going to risk it. Ideally, you don't want to be 54 HP. You want to be just a little bit above that. Ooh, and a lucky burger drop. This could be what helps him get through. Quattro pulling out some money at the uh, department store. He's going to make a save there, and then I'll set up a death warp later. Crushing chop right away. 
We need a burger. Ow, this cop is not playing games, so Quattro getting a lucky butterfly right in the way. Wow, this cop is not just oof. Play nice at all. So depending on how much food he has left, oof one. Okay, so he may end up in the same boat. Yeah, okay, he's gonna end up in the same boat as Quattro, where he's gonna have to have two life ups and then one rockin'. I hope for the best, really. Alright, at this point he could choose to just double rockin' or he could choose to play it safe. We'll see what he decides. Going all out! Very risky, but it's always a good time. 69, not a good roll. And that is going to be another death for Toucan. A strong death is a very brutal one, because not only will he have to go to the drugstore and pull out money, buy more burgers, he will have to fight all of the cops over again. It's about four to four and a half minute time loss. Quattro making his way up to load the pencil into memory. The connector cave is a bit of a nuisance. They are 16% spawn plates, but they feel like a lot more than that. So he's using his knowledge. He noticed it was stuck and wasn't moving. So he, know he, he knows he can get around that. He went up to just about the line. I hope he went up high enough there. So he could have played it risky and tried to get around that one. I wouldn't have recommended it in a race setting and depending on whether he knows he's ahead or not, you, you want to play a little bit safe. No, 67 is not safe for Strong. Strong can hit up to like 55. That's leaving you with no HP. Unless he does like his on guard move, that's it. I don't know all of the moves, I think he's got 3 or 4, so it's like a 25 or 50% chance he's going to attack. Unfortunately, Toucan got the bad roll. <laughs> yes, Airframe here in the chat is the only other person who has this much bad luck during a race. It's very unfortunate when a runner dies. It does set them back quite a bit and it makes it an uphill battle to try to Keep up. Watch her grabbing a second butterfly. I hope he did a life up beforehand. One thing to note is you really don't want to chase the butterfly down. If it's just a little bit of distance away and it bumps into something, sure grab it. If it flies way off in the opposite direction, don't bother chasing it because there are multiple spawn plates for butterflies and they will most likely have something there in your way. Choosing a burger on low HP. Okay. So this is exactly why I don't do that, because then you get stuck in this loop of just constantly trying to keep your HP high enough if they keep doing like a crushing chop on you. But it looks like he's trying to save as much psychic points as possible. Now something that you can do when you hit COP 4, if you do have food left over and you have 30 psychic points, for COP 4 you could choose to rock in him, and then that would have a very high chance of just one hitting him. That would give you the opportunity to save back some food and whatnot.
So he's starting COP 4. We'll see what his ending HP is going to be. Ideally, he probably could have used a burger there, since he was going to take more damage, and then use the life up first turn on strong. Third turn smash is no good. It's actually time loss. Watch her choosing to go behind that bush. I respect that. That's a good way to avoid anything on the right there from like sneaking over and grabbing them. The sprouts are much like uh, mushrooms. They have a very small aggro radius. Unfortunately, he got caught a little bit trying to go around that. So he will need to just try to rock in his way out of this. UFOs have like 55 speed or so. So the odds of you running is very, very low until like turn 6 or something, turn 7. He did take quite a bit of damage there. So at this point, he will need to life up and he will need to heal and then grab another butterfly along the way. Can making his way down to Tucson now. Quattro is moving up like that in order to do a spawn plate skip. And fortunately, it doesn't skip the one that's a little bit above it. So if you saw Toucan moved up a little bit, there can be ninja shrooms hiding behind the trees. Uh, Quattro probably could have gone around the right and gotten around that. I guess he wants to play a bit safe here. The trees are slow, you can't outspeed them. The Toucan pulling out 530 here. This will give him the chance to potentially have at least 199 or more after shopping in threed and by doing that when they, when you die your money gets split in half because it's an odd number it's going to take that odd number over the even and he'll end up with 100 that will allow him to skip hitting the ATM and then just go straight to reviving Paulo so you lose a small amount of time pulling out money but you'll save like five or six seconds not having an ATM He outrun most trees, IRL. Quattro making his way into the drugstore. Gonna buy the Sandlot Bat and the Holmes Hat. Give him the offense and the defense he needs. And he may need to buy some croissants. Unfortunately, he won't have 200 after shopping. So yeah, he's got 173. He will need to hit the ATM afterwards. So something that a lot of new runners don't really know. There is a little sign there below that house that's beneath the drugstore. Oof, that is a bad situation. So he could try to, yeah, play it smart and pull it away. I'll give him a free walk to it. Some people choose to just go back up and respawn the room. But there is a little sign there that you can uh, interact with and it'll give you the option to buy a banana or a fresh egg. I would buy the fresh egg after you do the shack fight because it does heal like 80 or 90 or something like that. But if you wait too long it'll turn into a chick. You can lock it up to load in the memory the uh, pencil. The shack fight is very dangerous. You just want to rock in, and if you kill one of them at least, you can bash out the other. If it doesn't kill either of them, you definitely want to rock in again. Fortunately, Quattro getting the trifecta 
Both tests have 94 HP, so those were very, very good rolls. And he got the vitality up. The rocket, I believe, is 80, with a chance to do plus or minus 50%, which can give it a range from, what, 40 to 120. He got very good rolls there. Oof, getting blocked off by mushrooms. Usually after the uh, the shack fight you'll need to heal. Fortunately, I don't think he needs to. He does have enough HP. He's gonna just go ahead and uh, start bashing away. Keeping in mind this cultist does have 94 HP and he can call for help. If he does, you do want to do a rockin'. But generally, depending on your offense roll, you'll kill him in one or two hits. But you're doing, I believe, exact damage. The car painter, very straightforward fight. He is scripted. He has two sets of three moves. He's going to start off by doing a lightning reflect, and then he's going to do a life up and then an attack. And then he'll do a lightning reflect, a shield, and then attack. And then he'll just repeat each one over and over again. So ideally, you want to just bash turn one, and then just rock in for three turns, or however many psychic points you have. He has, I think, 262 HP. Good rock and rolls. And the reflect. So that will be a card painter down for Quattro. That was a pretty good fight. You want to have less than 50 HP afterwards. Any more than that, and it's going to take you a little while to die to the mole. The two can't make it his way through PRV. PRV is a very dangerous area. There are a lot of spawn plates and a lot of enemies that move erratically. You do have to be careful walking through there. You can't choose him to go up above. That is an option, it does wrap around. A lot of new runners don't really realize that. So if something's below, you can choose to go above. Quattro's just gonna be doing some uh, little story thing here, grabbing Paula. Two can't choose him to go around the tree. They do move slow, so it is easy to get around them. Looks like he does have all the butterflies he needs. Overall, a fairly clean PRV. The last plate can be a bit tricky, because you can get pincered if you aren't careful. Uh, he probably could have gotten around that. So what he can do is drag it out of the way and then go around it. Excellent. Well played. Butcher is going to be dropping all of his equipment, and he's going to drop the teddy bear. The teddy bear has a 75% chance to take damage for you, and it has 100 HP, so you want to get rid of it to make the death orb as quick as possible. You do have to be careful, there are crows out here, and if they tag you, they're just painful to kill. Um, Toucan, I, I think he forgot to shop. So, we're gonna see, um, just how dangerous this really is without equipment. He has been learning to some manip here recently, so I'm guessing that's kind of what's been going on here. He might have had the muscle memory to just kind of, uh, oh, choosing... He's gonna run with smart there. I was a little worried he was gonna bash it out. <laughs> Crows have, do have very high speed, but he did get a green swirl on him. So the mole is very straightforward. ATM card, bash. If Ness dies first, you can just auto fight. Otherwise, if Paula dies first, you'll just have to keep using the ATM card until Ness is about 15 HP. Ooh, and a gut save on Paula. Okay, okay, it wasn't a very bad death warp. Could have been better, but that wasn't terrible. Ah, Toucan, okay, um... 
21 HP. So we will need a double rock in here. Watch is gonna go up and uh, he's gonna revive Paula now. You do need Paula in order to complete the next few story triggers. Toucan making it through a dangerous fight without the uh, Holmes hat. I guess technically you don't really need the Holmes hat if you have a cheap bracelet, but it does make a difference if you want to play it safe. But you're getting a little spooked by an enemy there. Well, okay, he doesn't have the Sandlot bat. Should be interesting. Gonna grab the Sage Croissant? Yes, he is. So he's probably hoping this will save him some time here. Uh, if I was him, I probably would have grabbed the Skip Sandwich. Because there is a less chance that he's going to kill this cultist. Oof, call for help. So he's gonna have to burn a rock in here. He did outspeed one, which is good. Fortunately, he outsped the wrong one. Oof, playing very risky right now. Not 100% certain why he ate there. Butchpuss went and talked to Paula's dad, and then he went to talk to Everdread and got the water bills. He's got the backstage pass, so he's gonna go ahead and head on into the theater to watch the show. We did get the outspeed. You don't really want to have an outspeed there. Okay. He could choose to use the cookie here, and that would put him at a very low HP. I would definitely do that. Ouch! And the outspeed. Fortunately, he didn't take damage. Otherwise, he may have died there. And car painter down. I believe that was one more cycle than uh, Quattro got. We're gonna see Toucan is heading up to get Paula and he'll be setting up his death warp as well. You do need to be a bit careful how you walk to the shack. Preferably, you want to go below the fence and then go left. Because if you walk straight left there, you do run the risk of a crow spawn being over there and then it just sniping you. Because he didn't do any shopping, all of his items were right up there at the top, making menuing just a little bit easier.
But you're jumping on the Runaway 5 bus here. Oof. Very good start. So at this point he could defend. Oh wow. That was basically perfect. Could not have asked for a better death warp. So he does have $100, he can skip the ATM, that'll save about 6 seconds there. Toucan's gonna be doing some story triggers here. Quattro is about to be dropped off in Threed. The only dangerous area in Threed really is the graveyard. You do have to be very careful walking through there. The flies do move pretty crazy and they can get you if you're not paying attention. You can't get them stuck on the graves. You do have to kind of learn how they move so that you could avoid that. The ghosts, they're broken and they can clip through objects. So you do have to kind of mine them as well. We'll see how Quattro handles Graveyard. Ideally you want to get up to the top and you want to activate the zombies. After that, if you do die, it's not the end of the world because you can just walk straight to the hotel. I'm not sure what he was despawning there. I guess he's just playing it safe. So you do only have to walk on that grass patch and then just turn around and that's it. Uh, you kind of want to walk down left into the trees. That way, if there are flies over to the left, they won't just snipe you. He played a bit risky there. It was a gamble you really don't want to take in a race. There was a fly? Okay. Depending on where they are, sometimes you could just kind of let them despawn themselves. Toucan starting up to show. Quattro starting up winners. We got two little cutscenes going on now. Gotta be your worst boogie ever. Yeah, you've had some really, really bad luck. I feel your pain on that one. So Tony Joe and the party here. Gonna walk downstairs to talk to their teacher. The teacher's gonna be like, oh hey, you know, you're leaving in the middle of the night. Why don't you go get some stuff out of the locker? Sounds like a perfect idea, right? Yeah, that's the truth. RNG is uh not playing nice for these guys. Oof, used the broken spray can. That's gonna cost him a couple seconds. If you like playing a little risky, you can drop the spray can. It saves like three seconds or something. 
Ideally, you want to have it just in case you die in a boogie tent. Because if you die, you may not have enough money to revive both your kids and hit the, the hotel. And if you don't find a lucky butterfly and you haven't revived Paul or anything, and you only have just Jeff and Ness and no psychic points, you're going to have a very, very rough time trying to kill Boogie. Alright, so we get to be introduced to the worst character in the game. Bubble Monkey. He costs a dollar and you have to take him. Unless you feel like cheating and then you can get around taking him. Bubble Monkey is the very reason why manipulation ends at Graveyard. Because every time he stops and he like does his little dance, he's updating RNG. As you can see, if your movement is not perfect, he will just move all over the place. But you're having to do 1D spawn, that's not terrible. Ideally in a race, if you're ahead, you do want to take a dogfight. It's a small amount of time loss for the, the, the higher chance of surviving like a proto fight. Because it's a 50-50 chance on getting a bread roll, which you can use during the fight if you need to. And it will give you potentially offense and HP. Who can get ready to start graveyard? We'll see how his goes. Who can taking the more generalized approach there? Ooh. -oh. That ghost was not having it. He's playing defense hard. Ooh, and there's a fly. Ooh, smart. Then we get to see everybody's favorite, Tessie. Look at that adorable face. Toucan having a little bit of a rough graveyard. He handled it very well. Tessie is, without a doubt, the most loved creature in Earthbound. I mean, just, just look at it. How could you not like Tessie? And Toucan will be starting winners now. We'll see how Bubble Monkey behaves for him. Alright, so Quattro is going to be doing a weird movement here. He's going to move down left into this cliff. Because of an error in the code for checking when a plate should spawn, we can abuse this by avoiding a 100% spawn plate. There is a 100% spawn plate of a goat down here by the door. Which we do avoid. The first proto is a very risky, dangerous, annoying fight. It can choose to just bash you out and kill you right away. Oof, and that is a very, very bad start to this fight. So he is choosing to just bash it out. Okay. They take three hits. Depending on your HP or your offense, it could be four. Luckily, he got the smash from Bubble Monkey. You do want to heal. The duck can hit 12, and it has a 25% chance to hit you. Ooh, and the duck's setting him up for the duck skip. Come on, duck. Move left. Duck, hello? Are you there? So he's trying to move the duck left and then drag it down just a little bit further. Where it's at now. Okay, well he's he's just not having it. He's gonna have to just go ahead and take this duck fight. 
Yeah, okay, see. At this point, he could choose to respawn the duck or just take the fight. Personally to me, if that duck doesn't set up right away, you might as well just take it, because you're losing time if you do end up having to take the fight anyway. Pretty much you'll just start a fight. The duck can kill you if it gets down to wanting to deal some damage here. <clears throat> but the fact that it only does 12 generally means if you're full HP, it could take, you know, three hits to kill you. So he's choosing to use the cookie. You're going to see that he's going to try to get Bubble Monkey to stop. Ouch. Okay, that was, uh... I think he turned down just a little bit too late. But ideally, what you want to have is to move left, and because of how they aggro you, they will move in a straight line from the moment it starts to aggro you to that point, allowing you to walk towards it and then move down. It is a bit RNG and skill there, because if Bubble Monkey does stop in the middle of it, you're going to get caught. So you got to know when to move, when to turn down, and just hope Bubble Monkey cooperates. Watch are going to be starting Pond Cave. Generally, you're going to despawn the first room in each area until it's free. You do not want to stutter past if you're not confident in your stuttering. Ooh, okay, he thought that was a single. Ended up being a double there. You can just auto-fight them. They die in one hit. So he is 18 HP. Uh, he can choose to grab the burger and then full heal. Oh, well he got a life up. That's actually going to help. He won't need to heal now. So he's not very confident in his stuttering right now. He probably could have dragged that mouse down and then went around the right side of it. Uh, he probably should do that now as well. So drag it down and then move right and then around it. Well played. He could choose to just kind of move around there if he wanted to and just get them all kind of stuck on that gift box as well. You can ride on Tessie now. Oof, that is a lot of like, you don't want to mess with that. Two, maybe three enemies is okay. Any more than that and the game really starts to lag and stutter stepping becomes very, very difficult to do. Oof, You're just gonna have to keep despawning till he gets a walk or at least a good RNG assortment that he can stutter around them. There it is. It's a 60% spawn plate. Alright, Toucan's starting Brick Road here. We'll see how his proto fight goes. It looks like Toucan's starting to make up a little bit of time here. So ideally you want to have Bubble Monkey as close to the rope as possible. If you see how Quattro did that little movement where he moved left, that puts Bubble Monkey just a little bit closer to the rope. Since he does fly very slowly, you want to be very close to that rope. So it's a 70% spawn plate up above for the mushrooms. You do want to kind of just make sure they're at least to the right before they get stuck. Anything to the left has to be despawned. Good proto fight. We'll see if he gets the duck skip. If he can get the duck skip and the proto skip, it will save him a bit of time. Alright, so the duck is in a position where he can get the swag duck skip. And he got it. Nice. Oh, unfortunately did not get the proto skip. And the call for help. That's bad. Ooh, 
So he's choosing to use a spoiled egg here. It's a smart move. So he can continue to bash it out, or he can choose to defend until about turn 6 or 7 and then start to run. You don't very you don't have a very high chance until about then, so by defending you're reducing the damage in half. So we did get a good run there. And though it is not over yet, even though he's about to jump on the Skyrunner, if Quattro gets a very bad roll and Boogie Tent decides to just kill Jeff right away, he could lose quite a bit of time. Or if he were to not pay attention and get into a fight. So it is not over until it's over. Okay, making his way through Pond Cave. Getting about the same RNG here. Okay, so he can just choose to stutter right between them. He's pretty confident in his stuttering. Okay, okay, that was pretty clean. That will definitely save him some time there. So he could have chose to have Jeff walk down, and that would have put Bubble Monkey above Jeff. It's not much, but it is a small amount of time save. Uh, he probably could have taken that. Alright, okay. So that's not bad. The Skyrunner cutscene is about two and a half minutes. It's about a minute and two seconds from the moment Bubble Monkey walks away till the Skyrunner takes off. So you figure it's about three and a half minutes from this point until you land. And no nuts is just like, what? Oh, you're my son? I can't believe it. It's been 10 years. Would you like a donut? Have you seen the Stonehenge? Oh, you're leaving? Why don't you take my Skyrunner and just leave? I'll see you in 10 years. Bye. And that's it. That's that's their reunion after 10 years. You do actually have to mash until the Skyrunner starts to shake, otherwise it won't start and he's just like, well why don't you press the button? You could also tell Jeff no that you don't want him to join and he's like, but I came all this way, you have to let me join. Quattro's gonna move, ooh, and he got the tech. No door tech skip. You can move up to the door, but not touch the door, and you can use the bad key machine and get through without that text. Oof, trash cans. So he's gonna play it safe, grab the teddy bear. Uh, we'll see if he decides to save or just go for it. There are flies down there, you gotta be very careful with that. So the usual strat, you're gonna do defend defend BBR. If you want to play a little risky, you can do rock and freeze BBR. He's playing it safe. 672. And boogie tent down. That is gonna be a win for Quatropus. GG Quattro. This was a pretty close race. Like, I am surprised about how close this was.
<clears throat> Quatropus will finish with an official SRL time of 1.15.30. Congratulations to Quatropus. Alright, so Toucan will be doing the uh, little boogie tent fight here. We'll see if he decides to grab the teddy bear and if he's just going to go for an all out offensive or play a little bit safe. See Quatchpuss here doing the uh, the famous tent glitch. By checking in that exact spot, since the um, the entire Earthbound map is just kind of laid out in a big rectangle, this is the very bottom right corner of the map. So what he's doing is he's actually checking memory that doesn't exist, because he's actually checking out of bounds. So it's just pulling up random garbage from the memory. All right, watch us start boogie. All right, he's gonna play it safe. What you're hoping for is at least 585 or more. He did not get it, so he can just choose to rock and defend, defend. He is choosing to uh, queue up the bottle rocket just in case, and that'll be boogie down. P p p p p p p. You can get different things depending on whether or not you're on emulator or like SNES Classic slash Virtual Console or just on console itself. I don't know what causes it, but there are certain things that each one will have that the others won't get or won't get very often. It is possible to pull up the debug menu, and I guess technically if he did pull up the debug menu and finish with the cutscene, he could actually submit that as like a debug time. Alright, so Toucan Sham has finished with an official SRL time of... 1.18.01 It was an excellent race by both runners. Unfortunately, Toucan did have some bad RNG. And uh, I think this will about wrap it up. Thank you all for watching. Have an awesome night. Uh, I believe we have another race coming up here in another 45 minutes if you want to hang around until then. And we are going to cut it here. See ya.